In the distant future, aliens who live on asteroids near the center of the galaxy get in touch and want to come visit you. And so you tell them, of course, I'm free any day this week. But they don't know what that means. They live in an asteroid belt and have a totally different kind of calendar, and to them, the concept of a day is very alien. So you tell them that a day is simply how long it takes the Earth to complete a full rotation about its axis. And as they input that into their computer simulation, you notice a fatal flaw in your explanation. As the Earth rotates relative to the distant aliens, it moves a little bit around the sun, and by the time it makes its way to the other side of the sun, our daytime and nighttime have somehow switched, with the sun directly overhead when one day changes to the next, rather than in the middle of the day. This is not what we mean when we talk about calendar days. What you've actually described to the aliens is called a stellar day, and it's measured with respect to a distant, more or less stationary reference point far off in space like aliens. But our concept of a day has more to do with the sun, not the galactic center. So you try again. This time you tell them that when earthlings look up at the sky, for each turn of the earth there's a time when the sun is highest, and a day is simply the time it takes for the sun to get back to the highest point. And so the asteroidians tap away on their instruments, calibrating them to your insightful specifications until you notice that their day counter isn't staying in sync with your clock. It's starting the new day earlier and earlier and earlier each day, and then later and later and later. This isn't a bug in their programming. It's a feature of the Earth's orbit. What you actually describe to them is called a solar day, and it's not the same thing as a day kept by our clocks. Solar days use the sun as a reference point for when noon is, but the length of time between when the sun is highest isn't constant. It changes up or down by about a minute over the course of the year. This discrepancy is due to the complications of the Earth's orbit being elliptical and the Earth's spin axis being tilted. If we used solar days in everyday life, we'd either need to have calendars and clocks that changed the number of minutes and seconds in a day depending on the time of year, or we'd need to have clocks that changed the length of a second, or change the number of seconds in an hour, depending on the time of year. And sundials kind of automatically do this, but they have other drawbacks. Anyway, changing the length of a second or the number of seconds in an hour isn't particularly appealing for regular or interplanetary use. And so you tell the asteroid aliens that a day is more or less an invented time period that is 24 hours long, where each hour is 33 trillion oscillations of a special kind of photon emitted by a cesium atom. And if they want to know why a day is just defined to be a fixed time period, and how that time period actually relates to the rotation of the Earth, you can send them over to our interactive video over on Minute Labs. It'll guide anyone and everyone through the details of solar, stellar, and standard 24-hour days, how they're related, and how the orbit of the Earth affects them. Not only that, but it also lets you play around with a different orbits to see how that changes the length of those days. The link is in the video description, or you can just go to minutelabs.io and look for the What is a Day lab, and you'll be fully prepared to coordinate a visit with aliens, no matter what day that may be.